Welcome to this overview of the Monolithics Complete Library. Using the Monolithics Library can save you a great deal of money by eliminating the need for costly equipment, reducing the number of PCB board spins and design iterations, as well as improve your development schedule and productivity. All of our models are available as one vast collection. Our library is constantly being updated to support new EDA software versions, as well as to include new models. We offer top-notch library support to our customers as well. So what are some of the advantages of using model ethics library? Well, compared to using ideal component models or even the typical S parameter files that are available for download from vendor websites, our models are measured and extracted using consistent techniques, as well as all of our models being measurement validated and coming with complete documentation and professional support. Most of our models include substrate scaling, which is unique in the industry, as well as pad scaling. Some of our device models, depending on device type, will also include temperature dependence, power, harmonic, and time domain validations as well. We support a number of different EDA software tools, and we also offer multi-simulator license options as well. Modelithics has partnered with a great number of vendors. Here are just a few examples of some of the key vendor partners that Modelithics has been working with over the years. In this business case study, a longtime Modelithics customer was attempting to optimize a harmonic filter for peak performance. He compared using the model ethics library to develop the design versus what it would have cost him in both time and schedule to optimize the same filter. It was concluded that several PCB spins were eliminated, as well as the circuit R&D cycle was shortened by up to one to two months. This customer also reported 150% engineering productivity improvement and three times savings in schedule, circuit design iterations, and total costs. For more information about this case study, please see the published paper section on our website. The Model Ethics Complete Library is Model Ethics' premier product. The Complete Library is comprised of the CLR Library, which contains resistors, inductors, and capacitor component models. These models are substrate scalable, part value scalable, compatible with statistical analyses, and also have advanced pad features. The NLD Library contains our nonlinear diode models for components such as varactor, pin, and shot key diodes. These models are also substrate scalable but include bias dependence, and temperature dependence as well. The NLT library contains our nonlinear transistor models. These models also feature substrate scaling, temperature, and bias dependence. These models are also compatible with high power and noise analyses. Finally, our SLC library is comprised of system-level component models for devices such as amplifiers, attenuators, filters, and transformers, to name a few. We also offer the model ethics substrate library, which is a convenient library containing predefined substrate definitions for many popular PCB and thin film boards. Our SPAR library is a grouping of models that are based on measurement files. These models are single substrate and not pad scalable, but are very useful datasets packaged conveniently into a part selectable model. The exemplar library is our comprehensive trial library with a sampling of all types of models. The Select Plus library is a free long term evaluation library containing a small collection of models. A key feature of model ethics models are their substrate scalability. A model's substrate scalability is evaluated based on the H over ER ratio range, so this is the height of a substrate divided by its dielectric constant. To take advantage of substrate scalability, the user simply needs to define the substrate in their schematic, and model performance will change as these parameters are varied. In this plot, the model represented by the red, blue, and green solid traces aligns well with measurement data, shown with symbols. Compare this to the vendor S2P file, which is shown with a black bold trace. It can be seen here that substrate has a large effect on part performance. If a vendor S2P file is used in a simulation of a different substrate, then an accurate simulation may not be possible. Another advantage of models over S2P files is the avoidance of extrapolation errors. Seen on the plot on the left, when the simulation exceeds the highest measured frequency of the S parameter data file, it could be extrapolated to a flat line, as seen here, or it could even go non-physical, going to positive S parameters, depending on how the simulation is set up. A similar problem exists at low frequency. When the lowest frequency data point of the S2P file is exceeded, the simulator will simply extrapolate the performance as a straight line. A microwave global model is associated with an entire family of parts. Each family pertains to a given body style and may cover component values that cover over two to three decades. 
Using a single microwave global model improves the efficiency of circuit design, as you can control the part value using a single parameter that can be scaled, tuned, or optimized. Each monolithics model, both passive and active, have an associated data sheet that contains detailed information about the models, including the development details, model features, model to measurement comparisons, reference planes, validation ranges, and more. All model ethics models go through a consistent model development process. For microwave global models, several samples of each part from the device family are measured on multiple substrates independently by model ethics. All of our measurements are done in-house. In addition to the multiple substrate data that model ethics takes to develop each model, we also use separate impedance measurement for our RLC component models. These datasets are then combined to extract an equivalent circuit model to represent an entire component family. Similar procedures are used for active devices and nonlinear models, but different characterization measurements are required, as well as different standardized modeling procedures. All model ethics models can be used in a statistical analysis by using the tolerance parameter. In this example, a yield analysis is performed on a simple low pass filter. As expected, when using tight tolerance parts, the yield increases. The SIM mode and PAD mode parameters in model ethics models allow for customized PAD and layout preferences when doing EMCO simulation. The models are compatible with EMCO simulation in ADS, AWR, Sonnet, and HFSS. Now let's go over a few application examples. In this example, let's go through a design flow for a low noise amplifier when using model ethics models. The design begins by optimizing component values and transmission line dimensions to account for a different substrate being used from the vendor's evaluation board. This design is then fabricated and measured. Next, we'll compare three different design simulations to the measured data. Design 1 uses vendor-supplied S-parameter data for the transistor in combination with ideal passive elements. Note the shift and the discrepancy in magnitude between the measurement and Design 1. In Design 2, an improvement is made by using model ethics precision scalable passive models in place of ideal passive elements. Now the shift in the response between simulation and measurement has been improved, but there is still a discrepancy in magnitude. In design three, the best agreement between measured data and simulation is achieved by using the model ethics nonlinear transistor model in conjunction with the model ethics microwave global models for the passive components. In this example, we go over a 30 watt power amplifier analysis. On the left-hand side, we first compare measured data for a Corvo transistor device against the model ethics nonlinear model available in our Corvo GAN library. Next, we compare simulations of the input and output matching networks against measured data. Finally, on the right-hand side, we perform a complete analysis of the power amplifier combining the input and output matching networks along with the nonlinear transistor model to perform a broadband S-parameter sweep as well as a power sweep. Note the excellent correlation between simulation and measurement for both. The nonlinear model featured in the previous slide is part of our model ethics Corvo GAN library. This library is a powerful design tool, including a large variety of die and package device models for Corvo devices. Both package discrete GAN products as well as die GAN products are represented. As with all of our libraries, we're regularly adding new content, version control, and updates with every release. The Model Ethics Corvo GAN library also comes with quick access to model data sheets within the library, as well as many example and reference projects for designers to use. Support for these models comes directly from Model Ethics. The models in this Corvo GAN library feature the scaling of operating voltages, ambient temperature and self-heating effects, as well as intrinsic voltage and current node access for waveform optimization, and the ability to enable or disable bond wires for die models. Noise modeling as well as channel temperature sensing is available for some of these models as well. This library is sponsored by Corvo and is available to designers free of charge. The Model Ethics Corvo GAN library is just an example of what Model Ethics can do for you. Model Ethics offers custom order modeling and has several sponsored libraries such as this. If you are interested in Model Ethics developing a custom library for your company, please contact Sales for more information. Model Ethics also offers the Millimeter Wave and 5G library. This is a special sub-library containing models that are validated to a minimum of 30 gigahertz, with some as high as 125 gigahertz. The Millimeter Wave and 5G library supports the next generation of cellular communications by offering a collection of models that are applicable to these new designs and the frequency bands of interest. 
The models in the 5G library include all of Monolithic's advanced features, such as substrate pad and part value scalability, thorough documentation, advanced pad features, as well as compatibility with transient simulation and nonlinear noise and temperature effect modeling as applicable. Monolithics offers the complete plus 3D library for ANSYS HFSS. Currently, this library contains the full CLR library plus all available 3D geometry models for HFSS. All models are documented with a model information datasheet, and the 3D models are based on physical dimensions and material properties and set up for full wave EM simulation. Once again, all of our models are measurement validated to ensure accuracy. To protect manufacturer IP, Monolithic's 3D geometry models are encrypted as well. So when are full wave 3D simulations needed? When components are placed in close proximity, coupling may occur. In this example, three capacitors are placed in shunt configuration on a 50 ohm transmission line. The distance between the capacitors is varied, and it can be seen that as the capacitors are moved further and further apart, the coupling between the components decreases. 3D component modeling is not without its difficulties though. Full wave 3D analysis has already been proven as a method leading to excellent results. However, the main issue lies in obtaining all of the necessary physical and material properties that are needed to complete the simulation. These are typically proprietary IP of the vendors. One of Monolithic's value adds is that we have relationships of trust with many different component vendors that have let them share this information with us under NDA. ANSYS's unique encryption technology allows us to build 3D component models and then distribute them to third-party customers while protecting the vendor IP. Even once all the physical parameters and material properties are obtained, 3D model creation is still not a no-brainer. Initial 3D model results might not be good when compared to measurement data, and for this reason, measurement validation as well as expert EM simulation know-how is crucial. In addition to extensive EM simulation experience, Modelithics already has a large database of measurements that are needed for these validations and can also obtain new measurements fairly quickly. Although we are validating our 3D models under very specific conditions, the resulting model is much more general than an equivalent circuit model and enables full-wave 3D EM analyses of complex circuits that will include component-to-component -component as well as component-to-package interactions. In this example, three shunt inductors are placed on a 50-ohm line. Seen here is the circuit simulation compared against measured data. The circuit simulation results, shown with the solid traces, suggest that not much of a shift is occurring as the inductor spacing is varied. Compare this to the measured data, shown with the red, blue, and green symbols. A noticeable shift is occurring in the first resonance due to proximity effects. Now let's look at the 3D simulation results on the right-hand side. The 3D simulation is capturing this shift in the first resonance that is occurring due to proximity effects. This plot tracks the frequency of the first resonance on the previous slide. The green trace shows the circuit simulation results and illustrates that the circuit simulation is not capable of predicting any sort of shift due to proximity effects. Compare this with the measured data and 3D simulation, which show that there is a clear shift in that first resonance as the spacing between components is changed. In this example, S parameter measurements on three different substrates are compared to the 3D model simulation for the mini circuit's high pass filter HFCN3800. Note the excellent model to measurement agreement shown on the plots on the right. In this example, we show the 3D geometry model validation results for two Gigalane SMA connectors placed in back to back configuration on a through line. Once again, note the excellent agreement between both magnitude and phase. In this final example, a buried QFN package is mounted on a 5 mil aluminum motherboard. A through line and bond wires are also mounted within the package. Below, the S11 and S21 measurement performance of this structure is compared against the 3D simulation of the same structure up to 40 gigahertz. Note that the simulation is tracking very well with the measured data and capturing all the resonances. Monolithics offers many different licensing options for their products. We have different license types as well as purchase options to best customize the Monolithics library to your needs. You can request a free trial today by going to the Monolithics website and clicking on the free trial button. Please contact sales at Monolithics with any questions. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. 
please let us know if you have any questions or if we may be of assistance.